heading up to the field with the hopes that uh, all will go well. I got the uh, got Paul's behind me. He's got the Piper Cub fuselage in the back of his pickup. I got the wing sitting underneath the uh, underneath the Taylor Craft. So I want to go up and uh, and get a shot with the uh, get a shot get a get a couple flights with the with the Cub first. Um, there's a formula. I'll post it. I'll post the place in the bottom of the video in the description. Um, on how I figured out what the stall speed is going to be. The Piper Cub, the stall speed uh, is supposed to be at uh, 24, uh, I think 24.5 or 24.6 miles per hour. And the stall speed on the Taylor Craft is supposed to be like I think 20, 28.1. So we're looking at about three, three and a half miles per hour difference. But uh, the Taylor Craft, um, the wing is not. Uh, perpendicular with the with the tail it's it's at about a two and a half uh, degree uh, positive to the tail so that will increase the lift of the wing so I'm gonna I, I got a the thing is trying to figure out how fast the planes coming in um, sorry about that how fast the planes coming in due to its size because the Piper Cup is substantially smaller the wingspan's close it's close um, you know two feet two feet narrower if it was a full size uh, then it'd be a much better uh, it would be a much better what do we want to call it uh, comparison um, so that's that's my biggest concern with the flight is we have to try to figure out how um, how to maintain the speed I need to bring that thing over the field. So that's about it. Let me uh, let me get back to driving, uh, and uh, I'll bring you back in when I get to the field. Yeah, but with the sunglasses on. Yeah, but I can see some of it. Yeah. All right. I anyway. just took my glasses and. That's not yapping. <laughs> Is it on? Is this yeah. thing on? Oh, it's on. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's hope. I'm gonna spin about 20, at least 20 trips around before it pops. For the first time on the, uh, the choke, of course. About $20. <laughs> it's got such a long way to draw up. Yes. Sex Dolmar, what they did is Jaeger started buying, buying, shipping in Sex Dolmar engines, putting all cylinders, which was the, was the one that the chainsaw guys wanted because it put out more torque, more low end torque. They put those on this and then did whatever they did to it. And they sold it. So it's a, it's a German engine built in about 1966 or 1986. Wow. So it's had that much, it's had many crashes on it. Have any problem getting up to speed? Hell no. <laughs> oh, she won't have any problem getting uh, up to speed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> came up on Even going way. uphill. It's just begging to take off, isn't it?
Oh, there it goes. Is that like a third to quarter throttle? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That wasn't even half throttle. That's enough excitement for me today. Well, now, at least now I know how it's going to want to take off with enough fill. Yeah, it's going to jump. In. Yeah. It's going to want to lift too early. I'll try to keep it on the ground. That's true. Yeah. Welcome back to my kingdom of dirt, aka the shop. Um, you saw a little teaser video, and there's a lot of people. You can hear folks in the background yelling, take it off, take it off. And of course, they're talking about the plane and just the plane. Um, not that kind of guy. So, anyway, uh, the, the plane did not take off, it did not fly today. And uh, the whole reason behind it, I'm just letting you guys know how I'm working this out just working things through my little head um, when I was flying a couple weeks ago with the Cub, three or three or four weeks ago with the Cub I had my little instant, I think I told you guys about it, that uh, I decided to go ahead and, and play with the wind uh, Piper Cubs don't like crosswind and uh, it ended up uh, when the plane came to a stop, the wind was so strong it started to lift it, and it spun it, tipped, a, hit a wing tip to the left, the left wing tip to the ground, and as it rotated it around, it just flipped it upside down. So there was no damage to the plane, but you know the only thing that was bruised was my ego, uh, because I I should have been flying in the wind, uh, that kind of wind to begin with, and if I did, I should not have done a crosswind. I had every opportunity to not do a crosswind, but. Uh, you know, the only way to get good at crosswinds is to practice. So, um, uh, the, the next incident was, and this was a little over a week ago, um, was uh, flying the Cub, the first flight uh, was smooth and nice. It was a very good flight, uh, good landing. Uh, the second flight, it started to have a kind of issue with pitch control. Um, and I didn't know if it was just because it was starting to get a little bit windier, if it was just little thermals popping off the ground making the plane bounce up and down. You know, a lot of times uh, when you do that with an with a RC plane, the general rule is don't fight it, fly through it. Um, because usually when you get through that little, that little burble of air, either going up or down, uh, everything, you know, just, just keep going through it. Don't try to, because if you try to overcompensate for what it just did, that's where bad things happen. Um, so the first, uh, so this is on the second flight, so everything went okay, even the landing went okay, but you still have that little question in your mind is, what was that? So on the third flight, right on takeoff, it couldn't find center on the elevator. So that was an elevator servo, it's the pot that, it's, it's the pot for the, the controller. Um, and when, just sometimes just after age, you know, after usage, who knows, it could just be from G's, from vibrations, um, you'll burn the center of the pot out and then it can't find center so it bounces up and down above center trying to find something that's really not there anymore. So the plane started pitching up, pitching down, um, but it wasn't a little bit of a pitch up and down, it was quite, quite large, it's a lot larger than you ever want to see, so uh, it took me three attempts to land it. Uh, and on the third attempt, I had a good little portion of the final coming in where it smoothed out, it didn't pitch up, and it didn't pitch down. Uh, when I did my flare about a foot and a half off the ground, I started my flare, it just pitched down. So I broke the prop and bent one of the landing gear. Um, no big deal, new prop, and just straightened out the landing gear. So it, it was ready to go. When I uh, Flew it at the field. That little video, my little my little taxi teaser, um, 
before I flew that, the decision was made I was not going to fly the plane today. I've had one really good flight on the Piper Cub and one okay flight and two bad flights. So, um, so I just decided because karma is an evil, evil little uh, game to play. Um, I, I decided to uh, just let the, the maiden flight go today. Um, because if you don't feel confident in getting back to a plane you've flown so often, um, don't don't take that maiden flight. I was dropping in off of about seven to eight feet of corn, so and it shouldn't be that high. It should maybe be three feet this time of year, but because of all the rain we had up here in the Midwest, it's already at eight feet. So I got to drop in over some eight foot of corn down to a landing field. And that is going to take off a good portion of the field. Um, figure out of a 400 foot field, that's probably going to shorten shorten the landing area by about 100 feet. And I, I and I, I really want to get a couple flights in with the Piper Cub just to see what the Piper Cub's going to do. Because, uh, like I said earlier in this video, there will be some there'll, there'll be the, a, a link to the website that I went to where you can calculate your stall speed. Is it perfect? No, not at all. It's not perfect. It's going to put something in your mind to get you close to about where you're going to need to be. So, and I think I said earlier on in the video, it's going to be about 28.1 miles an hour. Assume 30. Um, the Piper Cub is 25.4, I think it was, or somewhere around there. 25, I think it was 25.4 miles an hour. Um, so you're not even going three miles an hour faster. So what I can do is I can practice, uh, a lot of times I'll bring the Piper Cub in and just do a wheel landing. Don't try to do a three-pointer, just practice wheel landings. It's, that's the way real airplanes land. Uh, tail draggers, you kind of want to three-point them, uh, just because that's what you can do with them. Um, but you, you still, if you learn how to do wheel landings, um, you learn greater control of the airplane in higher speed landings and you become better at takeoffs. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys out of the shop. I'll bring you up uh, by the van because I've already got the cub already set up. Just to show you what a servo does where the pot's burned out in the middle. So, that's about it. And what I'll probably do is when I get you upstairs, get you upstairs, get you outside, just to uh, show you what, uh, what the aileron's doing. Um... I'm probably going to throw in, just at the end of this video, uh, now you know what, I will throw it in. It's something if, you know, once you see what a bad servo does. Um, if you don't want to watch the end, don't watch the end. But I do have a, a glider. It's like a performance glider. It's, it's called a, it's called a flex, Flexifoil. Uh, it's by a company uh, out of Great Britain. And I got it, no kidding aside, probably... 15, 16 years ago, if not more than that, it probably was probably more than that. I think I got them in 2001 or 2002. But anyway, it's about a six foot, probably not six foot, probably more like a four or five foot um, sailplane. And it's a, it's a lifting surface sailplane, so it's just like a parachute. Like you see the guys with the parachute where they can steer them in. It's not the round one, it's the aerobatic ones. Um, same thing, and you just pull on it, you know, so it's just like a, just like a parachute on how they steer a parachute, you're doing the same thing with that. Um, it, it's always in the van, and when I go up to the field, uh, and the wind just turns bad, or it is just bad, because a lot of times, what it says the winds are going to be out here, because of Lake Michigan, it's not what you're going to get. Um, so, I'm going to tack that on the end, I'll see how well I can edit it, um, just to show you what the kite does. And I don't know if they still make them, but if they still make them, it's, it's, a, it's a really good kite. And if you go out and fly it in like 30 plus mile an hour winds, hang on tight because uh, it, can, it can pull you on the ground if you slip and fall. So uh, I think they got a top speed, uh, recorded top speed of 122 miles an hour. And that's going across sideways. So in, in, the, in the video that I'm showing you guys, I probably popped pretty close to 80 miles an hour a couple times with it, and that was with about a 20 mile an hour wind. So um, I've had it where it's been so ungodly fast 
that I did on wet grass and I slipped and it actually dragged me on the wet grass and that was back when I weighed about I was probably somewhere around 265 270 um, so and to you know drag a fat man <laughs> across the wet grass it's got some good pull to it so uh, I'll bring you upstairs and then uh, I'll show you what the poop is on a servo and then uh, we'll finish this video up and we'll send you out a shorty this week so you up at the car all right here is the Taylor craft in the car it's pretty tight I didn't do a really good job cleaning up putting it back in tonight uh, on the way back home that's my canopy and then I've got a chair and there's the flexifoil kite it's upside down but that's the kite so um, like I said it rides in the car what I'm gonna try to do Thursday Thursday is gonna be another possible flying day and I'm hoping so because I want to the winds are gonna be from the same direction a little bit stronger which is good because four miles an hour uh, at, at 90 degrees the wind ended up coming out of the west today it's supposed to be out of the south southwest on thursday uh, but four mile an hour wind out of the west wasn't going to slow this down too much so uh, that was another reason why i kind of bailed on it but what i'm going to try to do i want to try to bring that up at the same time and i want to get that in here too and as crazy as it sounds i think i might be able to do it what i'm going to try to do is push that other passenger seat farther forward move the front end of this over that way and I think that's going to give me enough room right here to stash the fuselage on the Piper Cub and then the uh, the Piper Cub wing sits perfectly underneath between the two front wheels all the way back to the uh, to the rear wheel fits perfectly underneath it so it'll be protected under there all right now here is what I'm going to show you the problem was with the cub come on it's me mr. fabulous let's start it up let's see if we can watch it dad's doing that all by itself and if you move it a little bit you can get past it and it'll hold its own but as soon as you get back to rest and that's something you don't want to be flying with So as you can see, that was what made me uh, choose not to fly uh, the Cub today. Hang on a second. Uh, so that's why I didn't want to fly the Cub today. And that's why I didn't fly the Taylor Craft today. Um, chances are would I probably be okay with that. It's just an aileron, I could probably be okay with that. Um, but I just chose not to. So I'll get a new servo thrown in there. Um, and then we'll have her at the field on uh, Thursday, wind and weather depending, and uh, Taylor Craft will be with it too. And then once again, I'll have two video cameras out there with the hopes that I could find one person that can do a halfway decent job uh, shooting video so we can, get, uh, we can get the first video recorded. So um, that's about it. So I will uh, go inside and uh, throw this video together and ship it out tonight. And... Uh, We'll see you guys uh, next time I'm heading out to the field. All right, hey everyone, welcome out to the field. Um, planned on getting about 10 flights in today with the Piper Cub just to uh, try to get myself ramped up for Sunday because I'm planning on having the uh, Taylor Craft out. Uh, but because it's too windy, there's really not too much shit we can do. Flex foil kite. And I'm twisting up and I don't know if you can see the name. It's upside down, backwards flex foil. Uh, they're made in Great Britain. At least I still think they're made in Great Britain. It, they may be. Uh, they may have been discontinued. Anyway, just just search flexifoil.com. Uh, see if you can still. Get it. Uh, this one here is a Stacker Three, and uh, this one. Uh, 
this model still holds the world speed record. I think they got 122 miles an hour or something for a top speed on it. So it's a really nice little agile kite. So let me see if I can get this thing uh, out and then up in the air. It, it likes winds, you know, 15 mile an hour plus, and right now it's probably, we got, we're in a lull right now. So um, it's probably somewhere around 10. And hopefully the little wind sock, the dead cat, is uh, keeping all the noise down. So let me get out here and see what we can do. you point in the right direction. That's what happens when you run out of wind with these. And that's how you land them. They don't break, they just bounce.